Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, I want to thank you uh, for gathering with us online uh, as we uh, have our, our service. And my prayer is that you would be blessed today, that you would encounter uh, God's grace and power today um, as you um, are joining us uh, for our service. Uh, if you are tuning in for the very first time, then I give you a special blessing um, and a special welcome. Uh, and again, my prayer is that you would encounter the love and the power of God um, for your life. Do you know, if you are tuning in, you just happen to be on today and you ha don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, my prayer is that you would encounter his love for you. Um, and that you would just see uh, God just pour his love into your life today. Uh, so be blessed uh, in our service today. Uh, we are in our summer programme, so not much happening. Uh, connect groups have stopped, um, and but we are continuing to pray. Uh, every Tuesday night, 7.30, here at the church, um, we are... Uh, praying uh, and seeking God. Uh, again, um, if we are going to see change in our own lives, if we are going to see change in our city, it's only going to happen uh, through prayer. And I want to encourage you, if you have not joined us um, for prayer or to pray together, then come down Tuesday night, 7.30, praying for an hour, um, just seeking the face of God. Um, last Tuesday night, uh, there, I, I tell you, the presence of God uh, was tangible. Um, and, you know, that is uh, the power of prayer. Um, and so come and join us uh, as we pray together, seeking him for our city, for our communities, for our own lives. Uh, so that is uh, what's happening uh, this week. Uh, next Sunday is our in-person service so again we encourage you to sign up. There are still a few places left. Um, not many um, there is a few um, so we just want to encourage you to join us and again we're going to be having communion together um, and just uh, coming round the Lord's table um, so yeah and for those that are going to be watching online just encourage you just to have some bread and juice there uh, with you um, as we do that. Uh, so let me pray for us uh, and then we are going to spend uh, some time in worship. Uh, Father God, we thank you for today. We pray today that you would pour out your love upon us today. As we can't be together physically, I pray that you would just bring that sense of togetherness Lord, just that sense of oneness um, as we gather online as church. We are the church. We are the church. And so today, Father, through the worship, Father, as we hear your word, I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us and that you would change us, that you would search us, I ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, so let us spend some time in worship. Uh, and again, this will be our opportunity to give uh, of our tithes and our offerings.
hands and feet We choose to share We choose to share To follow where we choices. I've lost out. I've wished a thousand times I could go back and try again. It's hard not to imagine what might have been. If I had just stopped to think. If I had just done as I was told. If I hadn't thought I knew it all. Why didn't I just take a few deep breaths? Took one second to listen. Maybe my life would be better. Maybe there wouldn't be such a high price to pay. Things would be different now. I wouldn't have so many regrets. Everything lost? Can I just get a do-over? Is there a way back to new beginnings? Because regret can mean a new beginning. When it's given to the one who produces a repentance. A repentance that delivers me from my grief. The one who takes my mistakes. And somehow redeems me through them. Who tells me I'm not the sum total of all my regrets? He tells me not to look back. Because there's nothing there to see. I am not my mistakes. He is faithful and just to forgive me. I just have to ask him. And then I can look straight forward. Forget what is behind me. And strain towards what is ahead. And walk away with all regrets erased by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Every day I'm given a clean slate. A clean slate? I get a clean slate.
Uh, well, today uh, we are continuing in our series Encounters with Grace. Uh, Encounters with Grace. We have been looking at people in the Bible um, who encountered uh, the grace of God. Uh, and the truth is, we have encountered the grace of God. Uh, if you are a believer here this morning, uh, you have uh, encountered the grace of God. It is by grace that we have been saved. Uh, Paul in Ephesians uh, tells us that God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift of God. Why would God save us? Why would he pour out his grace upon our lives? Well, it tells us uh, in Ephesians that for that God, who is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. And then in brackets, in, in my Bible, it's got, it is only by God's grace that you have been saved. That you have been saved. Uh, God's grace, the power of God's grace. Do you know, we have been saved uh, by grace. If you know Jesus Christ today, you have been saved by grace. You are the recipient of his love uh, and his mercy. Uh, you may be watching today and maybe you don't have a relationship uh, with Jesus Christ, then I want to say to you today that you can know uh, the power of God's grace in your life. Uh, and I want to say also that you are loved um, by God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ. He gave his only son so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Um, and so my prayer today is that we would encounter uh, the power, uh, more of God's power of grace in our lives today. The power of grace. Uh, today, that is what I want to speak about uh, today. Uh, the power of grace. I've subtitled this, uh, Living uh, full of grace, living our lives full of grace. Uh, we are going to be looking at Stephen, um, who is said was a man full of grace. Uh, he was a man full of the Holy Spirit. Uh, he was a man full of wisdom, and he was a man full of grace. Um, today, my question uh, to you is, what are you full of? What are you full of today? Do you know, today you may be facing some frightening situations and you could be full of fear. You could be full of fear. Uh, you may be full of, of worry or anxiety, full of panic. Uh, but let me say to you today, just to, to ask God to fill you with his grace. To fill you with his grace to fill you with his peace uh, and not to, to let your life be full of these other things that will just box you in uh, and hem you in. I believe that you can know today the power of his grace in your life. So what are you full of today? Uh, Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Uh, this is what it says about Stephen. Uh, Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed amazing miracles and signs amongst the people. Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed amazing miracles and signs among the people. Uh, I want to encourage you to read uh, Acts chapter 6 and 7 uh, and just see uh, what what Stephen was like. Uh, today we are, are just looking at an overview of his life. Uh, it can be described, I want us to get the aroma um, of Stephen's life. Uh, just that aroma of grace 
um, today as we look at the life of Stephen. Who was Stephen? Uh, well, Stephen uh, was uh, one of the first deacons. Uh, Stephen was chosen to wait on tables. Um, the apostles needed to spend more time uh, in the Word of God, had to spend more time uh, in prayer. Uh, and so people were, were chosen uh, to wait on tables to serve the, the people. Um, Stephen, as I said, was a man full of the Holy Spirit. Uh, he was used by God um, in miracles and signs. Uh, Stephen preached the truth about Jesus Christ. Um, he was arrested for it. Uh, people were brought in to lie um, about Stephen. Um, people they couldn't stand up to Stephen's wisdom. He was a man full of wisdom. Um, they eventually stoned Stephen to death. Stephen died uh, for his belief um, and his love for Jesus Christ. Do you know, as you read Stephen's story, I believe that you will see the power of grace um, in his life. Um, so what can uh, we uh, see from Stephen's life today? What is the aroma that we can smell from his life uh, today? Well, the first thing I believe that we can see uh, from Stephen's life is the power of grace through humility. The power of grace through humility. Stephen served others. Um, he helped release the apostles to do what God needed them to do. Uh, and so Stephen uh, rolled up his sleeves and waited on tables. Do you know, Stephen was not about uh, or ministry driven. Uh, I believe Stephen was serving Christ driven. Um, and so did he have other gifts? Uh, I believe he probably did have. He probably did have. Um, but Stephen was willing uh, to wait on tables. Uh, his life was about serving Jesus Christ wherever and whenever. He was a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I believe we can see the power of grace uh, through his humility. Do you know the truth is uh, for us that we are called uh, to live our lives in humility. We are called uh, to serve, to serve others, to serve Christ uh, and to serve others. Um, again, the truth is it's not about my ministry. It's not about building my name. Um, it's not about building my <laughs> reputation. It is about serving Christ and serving others. Serving wherever and serving whenever. Um, it's about others. You know, the kingdom of God is about others. It's about seeing others encounter the power of grace. The power of God's grace for their own lives. Um, and for us who serve Christ, we can help facilitate that by serving others. Um, and so, uh, today, are you a person of humility? Are you a person of humility? Um, do you realise your calling is to be a servant. Jesus Christ was the greatest servant. Do you know, the Son of God who left heaven and came to this earth uh, and we see how he served people. We see how he rolled up his sleeves, got a basin of water and washed his disciples' feet. What an example uh, for us. And so, uh, humility, we can see the power of grace through the humility that was in Stephen's life. Uh, the second thing I believe we can see uh, is the power of grace to press through fear. To press through fear. Uh, Stephen, as he preached the truth about Jesus Christ, faced tremendous opposition. He 
just encountered uh, anger um, and lies and abuse because of what he was speaking about, the truth of Jesus Christ. Do you know, he spoke to the Sanhedrin, uh, the high priest and others, uh, with courage and boldness. And I believe we, we can see the power of grace to help him press through that fear. His relationship with God, with Jesus Christ, was secure that he could stand and speak the truth about Jesus Christ with courage and with boldness. Uh, the truth about fear is that fear will restrict us. That fear will box us in, will hem us in. Fear will keep us from experiencing all that God wants us to experience. Fear will keep us from being used of God, I believe, um, and serving and seeing others encounter the power of grace. So don't let fear rule your life. Uh, fear will paralyze you. It will cause insecurity, worry, panic. Um, the, the word of God tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and a sound mind, a confident mind, a confident trust in Jesus Christ. So God has not given us a spirit of fear. Uh, so believe that today. Uh, and my encouragement is to allow the power of grace to fill your life and to press through the fear uh, that you are facing in your life. Perfect love drives out fear in our lives. Amen. Amen. Uh, the third thing I believe that we can see uh, from Stephen's life is that the power of grace to see beyond the pain and the hurt that I believe Stephen experienced. To see beyond uh, the pain and the hurt that Stephen experienced. Uh, Acts chapter 7 uh, and verse 55. Uh, this is what it says. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honour at God's right hand. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honour at God's right hand. Wow. Do you know, I believe as Stephen spoke uh, the truth about Jesus Christ, um, the, the, the accusations and the lies, do you know, he would have experienced pain, I believe, um, and hurt. Uh, eventually they stoned him. Um, and the truth is that we all uh, experience pain and hurt in our lives. Uh, there may not be a time when we will uh, be stoned for our faith. Uh, we might not be uh, martyrs, but you know, we do experience in life pain and hurt. Physical, emotional, spiritual. Uh, and the truth is that we can uh, allow ourselves to get so caught up uh, with my pain, uh, my issues, my problems. Um, and so it just becomes our identity. Our, our, our pain and our hurt just becomes our identity. Uh, that we can um, allow our hurts and our pains to define who we are. But it's not who you are. Real issues, real problems, real pain, real hurts. We do experience, you know, pain and hurt in our life we do experience it Jesus himself says that we will experience trouble and hardship but to take heart uh, because he is with us um, and so Stephen here as it says he gazed 
towards heaven and saw Jesus. He saw Jesus. And so this morning, my question is, where is your gaze? Where is your gaze? Uh, where is your focus? Is your focus on uh, your pain uh, and your trouble? Or is your focus upon Jesus Christ? Upon Jesus Christ. Uh, let us uh, fix our eyes, our gaze upon Jesus this morning and allow the power of his grace to help us see beyond uh, the pain and the hurt. To see beyond the pain and the hurt uh, and see his glory in our life and through our life. Do you know, I believe that we can experience uh, God's power of grace, that we can see the glory of God um, even in uh, and through the pain and the hurt that we face. Paul uh, prayed uh, to God that God would release him from a thorn in his flesh. Three times um, he prayed and asked God to remove it. Um, and this is what God uh, said to Paul. My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. My grace is all, all you need. That is a word I believe for someone today because you are experiencing uh, pain. It could be uh, physical, mental, emotional. Uh, you could be in extreme pain today. Uh, my prayer is that you would encounter the power of his grace. Uh, yes, let's ask God for healing from the pain and the hurts. Um, but you know, sometimes the word from God is, my grace is sufficient. My grace is all that you need. Because his power is what best in our weakness. Uh, yeah. The fourth thing I believe that we can see uh, from Stephen's life is the power of grace to release forgiveness. The power of grace to release forgiveness. Stephen, as he spoke the truth about Jesus Christ and faced opposition as he faced accusation, do you know, he was eventually stoned to death for the, what he was speaking about Jesus Christ. Stephen held no contempt. Stephen held no grudge to those that accused him and lied about him. Whoa. And I believe that takes grace. I believe we can see the power of grace in his life. Forgiveness is not an optional extra in the Christian life. Do you know, we are commanded, we are told to forgive others as we have been forgiven. Forgiven or forgiveness is part of the Christian life. Is releasing forgiveness easy? No. Forgiveness is not easy to release or to give. Do you know, a lot of times we want justice. We want people to pay. Uh, we want to see um, people pay for what they have done to us. Um, but God in his word says to release forgiveness. To release forgiveness. If we are going to see more freedom come to our lives, if we are going to see our, us walk uh, in more freedom uh, in our lives, free from the stuff that has hurt us and, and brought pain, then I believe we have to use the key of forgiveness to release forgiveness. Forgiveness releases. Unforgiveness binds. Um, and so, uh, again... 
At times we have to ask God, God, would you give me the grace to forgive? We are not saying that what people did was okay, but we are releasing ourselves from the power of just being bound to that situation. Um, and as we release forgiveness, we, I believe, are set free. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Forgiveness releases. Unforgiveness binds. Forgiveness builds relationships. Unforgiveness, I believe, destroys relationships. And again, I just want to say about uh, forgiveness. It's not meaning that what the relationship was like is going to be restored back to uh, what it was. Um, but this is a, a releasing of you uh, from uh, the pain and the hurt of that situation. It says in Acts chapter 7, verse 59 to 60. Uh, let's read it. Acts chapter 7, verse 59. Uh, to 60. It says, As they stoned Stephen, or as they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he fell to his knees, shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And with that he died. Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And with that he died. He didn't hold that grudge. He didn't hold unforgiveness towards the people who stoned him. He released forgiveness. He released forgiveness. Wow. Wow. I believe to do that takes the power right, of God's grace in his life and in our lives. So uh, today, the power of grace in or through humility, the power of grace to press through fear, the power of grace to see beyond hurt, the power of grace to release forgiveness. What or where do you need to encounter the power of God's grace. And we are just going to spend some time uh, in ministry. Um, and again, you know, as we are online, we're not gathering together uh, physically. Uh, we are online. But I want to say, I believe God's power uh, is just as much available in your home as it is here in the church. Um, and so let's not just be watching uh, a broadcast, but let us be just so involved in the message and just allow the Holy Spirit to come. So let's just wait on the Holy Spirit um, as we just see what he wants to do in uh, your life uh, today. Uh, what area do you need to see the power of grace uh, in your life? Yeah, Father, I ask that you would come. Every home today, as we just wait upon you, Father, we want to encounter the power of your grace. Father, I ask for those that, Lord, are just waiting upon you, that you would just show them and reveal to them where they need to encounter your grace. Yeah, come Holy Spirit. And I'm just going to go through just the four areas uh, there. And I want to encourage you. Do you know, remember the days in church when we would invite people forward to come and be prayed for? Uh, and we can't do that at the minute. But, you know, in your home, uh, if you are responding to any areas uh, where you need to see the power of God in your life, uh, why don't you? Uh, yeah, you'll be able to still hear uh, the message. But why don't you stand up? or put your hands out, or put your hands up. Um, and again, it's just a response. Um, and it's you showing uh, Jesus that this is the area where I need to encounter the power of your grace. 
Uh, and so humility. In the area of humility, do you need to experience the power of grace just to see more humility come uh, to, to your life, to move from that place of pride to humility, to move from that place, I can do it, I am the one who will do this, to that dependence on the Holy Spirit, to that dependence on God, to move from being self-reliant to God-reliant. Maybe to serve rather than always waiting to be served. Maybe God is challenging you to serve somewhere. And so, Father, I ask that you would come and just with the power of grace, Lord, fill people with just humility. Yeah, come Holy Spirit. Maybe in the area of fear that you need to see the power of grace in your life to help you press through the fears that, that just overwhelm you. Let me say today, God's not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power and a sound mind to confidently trust in him. Today, as you stand, as you kneel, as you raise your hand, acknowledge to God, God, I'm full of fear and I need the power of your grace in my life today. Would you help me, Jesus, fill my life with peace, fill my life with love to drive out fear from my life. Maybe even say out loud, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Yeah, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. What about hurts? Do you need to see the power of grace in the area of hurts and pain in your life? Do you need to see healing come? Maybe you've been praying uh, for a long time uh, and seeing no breakthrough. Maybe today, God is saying to you, my grace is all that you need. My grace is all that you need. Maybe today, that you need to just acknowledge and ask God to help you see beyond just your pain, to see beyond that hurt. Yes, ask him to come and heal the pain and to heal the hurt. But today, can you see beyond your pain that you would see the glory of God just flow through your life, even in the pain and the hurt? What about forgiveness? What about forgiveness? Do you need to release forgiveness to someone today? Do you need the grace of God to help you release that forgiveness? Then why don't you just, again, put your hand up, stand, kneel, and just come before God and say, God, I need your grace to release forgiveness. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Father. Yeah, thank you. What has happened to you? Yes, it has been terrible. It should never have happened. But if you are going to walk in freedom, my encouragement to you is to release forgiveness, to ask God to help you release forgiveness to others. And so even in your home, or later on, find a quiet space and just release forgiveness to someone. Yes, uh, tell God who you are forgiven. Tell God why you are forgiven them. And then just invite him to fill you with his grace, with his peace, with his love. And walk in the freedom that comes through that releasing of forgiveness. Yeah, Father, come Holy Spirit. 
come Holy Spirit. And so, Father, today, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power of grace that we can see, Lord, in Stephen's life. Lord, and that we can see in our own lives. Lord, through humility, through fear, through our pain and our hurts, through releasing forgiveness. Father, today, would you fill us with grace? Fill us today, Holy Spirit. I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thank you uh, for joining us today. I, I pray and hope that this message has blessed you, has encouraged you, has challenged you, has given you some tools um, just to, to walk in more freedom today. Uh, be blessed this week and always remember that you are blessed to be a blessing. Mm -hmm.